traditional open heart surgery, which we've been doing for you know, 40, 50 plus years, involves a incision in the front from the top of the breastbone to the bottom and we actually divide the breastbone with a saw and, and spread it so that we have access to the heart and we use conventional instruments. It's uh, the gold standard, it's the way we've always done it, it's, it's relatively safe uh, and um, it gets the job done. The problem with conventional surgery is we do divide the breastbone so it's what we call maximally invasive and it takes a while to, to recover from that um, in addition to the other risks of, of that type of surgery. Increased risk for blood transfusion, longer time in the intensive care unit, longer time in the hospital, possible infections in the incision in the breastbone. So it's not without risks. What we like to try to do is to continually improve upon how we take care of patients. So for me, what that means is trying to do the same safe and effective operation, but in a less invasive uh, fashion. And that has uh, progressed from smaller incisions in the front, dividing only part of the breastbone to small incisions on the side. And what I think is the epitome of minimally invasive surgery is uh, robotically assisted open heart surgery. And that's where we do three or four small incisions on the side, either the right or the left, depending on what operation you need, and do the same operation, but through an incision this big instead of an incision this big. And that has been shown, and I've seen it over and over again in my patients, um, they just do so much better. They get up and moving quicker, they get out of the hospital quicker, and they get back to their life quicker. Well, that's a, that's a very involved question, and uh, it brings the point that not everybody is a candidate for this, and not, you know, every person is different. So, um, what I, when I go out and I train people, I say the most important thing about robotic surgery is not to try to put a square peg in a round hole. And the most important question is can you do the operation safely and effectively, uh, and not just through small incisions. So in terms of global procedures, we do everything robotically with the exception of aortic valve replacements, which we still do through actually through a small incision but in the front. The robot as an instrument in that situation really doesn't add a lot of value. Uh, but valve repair, tricuspid mitral valve repair, uh, bypass surgery, uh, incisions um, for operations for uh, atrial fibrillation or palpitations, heart tumors, that can all be approached robotically. And of course, we also have a thoracic robotic program here where uh, myself and my partners are able to treat um, fluid collections around the lungs, uh, lung cancers, collapsed lungs, uh, ro robotically also. The quality of the surgery is exactly the same and that, that's a real important point because we're not cutting corners to have an operation but through a small incision. It's the same operation. Uh, on average, you're in, in the hospital uh, probably two or three days quicker you get to go home. But most importantly, which, which hasn't really been studied um, academically, you get back to your life quicker. But I can tell you from talking to my patients, they go home and they're doing things much faster. A lot of times if you have a full sternotomy, you may go home on the seventh day, but really, you know, the first month or so that you're home, you're really just, you know, sort of recovering and you're tired and, and you're not really active. You're getting out and walking because we're telling you you have to walk twice a day, but you're not driving a car, you're not doing any heavy lifting, um, and you just feel like you were run over by a truck. Um, with, with robotic surgery, when you go home, you're able to drive a car immediately, you're able to lift whatever you want to lift, um, you're able to start fishing, play golf, whatever you, you feel like you're able to do, you are able to do.
once we decide that you need an operation, uh, we always look for the, the least invasive way of doing that operation safely and efficiently. So we're just going to keep trying to grow the program. We're starting to do coronary revascularization and actually in collaboration with our invasive cardiologists, we're, what, what that means is that we do the most important part of the operation, the artery to the front of the heart, bypassing that robotically, and then having our cardiologists put stents in other heart arteries that may be blocked. Um, we're also doing atrial clips for patients that have chronic atrial fibrillation uh, as an alternative to having to be on a blood thinner, which uh, can be life-saving if you have either uh, contraindications to Coumadin or you have a very active lifestyle, say you're a mountain climber and you don't want to be on Coumadin to people that are high risk for being on Coumadin, uh, that's a, a great lifesaver to do that, be able to offer that robotically with minimal downtime. So the sky's the limit for this. Um, this is a, a young gentleman, he was in his mid-40s, and he was an entrepreneur, but by avocation he was a mountain climber, and, and I mean like Mount Everest type mountain climber, and also a runner, a long distance runner, and he had been noticing for a year, year and a half, two years, that he was starting to get um, harder and harder to do things. Uh, he had to give up mountain climbing, he gave up running, uh, because he was just getting too winded and too tired. And they found out that he had severe mitral valve regurgitation. And uh, he, being um, fairly well educated, uh, did his homework and ended up uh, coming to see me, for which I was very grateful. And we went on it to do a robotically assisted mitral valve repair. And I saw him about one or two weeks after he went home from the hospital. And he told me that he had that morning uh, gone out and run five miles, and that was the first time he had been able to go running in a year, year and a half. So it's, it's very gratifying to see people get their life back. Um, and I, th I think that, you know, the real test for me in looking at a procedure is how I would treat my own family or myself. And I can tell you right now that if I needed to have my mitral valve repaired, I would have it done robotically.